and welcome to another episode of Homefront. It's Rome and I am your host and today we are talking climate change. We are joined today with Dr. Denise Beckers. Now, Dr. Beckers holds a PhD and she's a, a senior lecturer at the university in terms of chemistry, right, Dr. Yes. Beckers? I'm right with that? Yes, yes, very and, correct. And um, she deals with environmental science. So all of these big words means when it comes to climate change, she's the person we can talk to. So she's going to give us some of that information. So welcome, <laughs> Dr. Beckers. Thank you. So, Dr. Beckers, I, I've, been, I've been thinking for a while, right? And whenever I hear mm -hmm. climate change, I remember there was a cartoon called Ice Age. And they would have the raccoon or, or, or whatever it was, a little squirrel-looking <laughs> yes. thing. And there was like an acorn stuck in the ice. And then the ice started to melt and it got the acorn out. So when I was growing up and I did geography, we would always hear about global warming. And now we're hearing not really so much about global warming, but more climate change. So is global warming and climate change the same thing? No, 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 not quite the same thing. More like global warming results in climate change. Right. Right. Um, global warming is how the earth is warmed. And we have to be warm because without it, as I said, we would be living on an ice cube. Mm -hmm. And nobody's wearing a t-shirt at that time. I mean, I mean, I know I'm wearing a long sleeve, but um, even so. Um, so we have to have the global warming. Right. That's how we can, we can walk outside and our plants grow and we have, the, we have the, the lifestyle that we do. The problem is when you have too much global warming, like anything else, too much of a good thing is not a good right, thing. Right. So we need to have some warming, but not too much. Not and too that's much. what we are having now. And because of the excessive warming, we are getting these changes to our climate. Okay, so so with climate change now, we have we, we struck with a pandemic. We never expected this thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been hearing on the ground some people link in the boat where they could say that uh, because of the global warming and the climate change that it is easier for the, the COVID-19 virus and for pandemics to occur. Is there any correlation between the two? There, as far as I know, there is no actual direct evidence mm -hmm that links COVID-19 with climate change, climate change. right? But mm -hmm. there is evidence that there is a connection between climate change and other diseases, particularly ones that require like mosquitoes, mm -hmm. like so good old dengue, yellow fever, um, malaria, Lyme disease, anything or that So you see no, a direct so correlation between those two? Yes, because, with, yes, mm -hmm. with, um, with climate change. Because what is going on, of course, is these t mosquitoes are tropical creatures. Insects, right. And um, so they are happiest in warmer temperatures. So when you have a situation where places that didn't used to be warm mm -hmm. are now getting warmer, warm. the mosquitoes are able to travel further. Um, and so they are able to spread. The mosquitoes can spread, and so too do, do the, the, diseases the diseases that they that carry. Come with them. Yes. And, and as you say, warming of, the, of the, the globe itself, right? And I use the reference of Ice Age where we saw the acorn melt and all of that. And it was a funny movie. But are there any cases where we found like viruses or bacteria that have been locked in ice in terms of ice mm -hmm. caps or in terms of, 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 of ice yeah. cubes around the world? And now with global warming, these things melt and now they come into existence. So like a sci-fi movie. Yeah, I know it sounds like sci-fi, yeah. but it's not. It's true. Um, that is actually something that is a, 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 a subject of a lot of work right now. Mm. People, because um, what happens is those microorganisms, your bacteria and viruses and so on, they can live an incredibly long time once they are deep frozen, right. no oxygen, no water. So <laughs> think about your deep freeze a thousand times and, you know, you, you might look and under there somewhere, when you, you clean out your deep freeze, you find, you know, maybe a ham hidden under some stuff that you had, you're like, wait, why? I didn't know how long that was there for. Right. Um, maybe the ham wouldn't be too good to eat after, but believe it or not, those microorganisms, they can actually be reactivated um, even after being frozen for hundreds, sometimes thousands of years. It's pretty um, an amazing thing, um, mm -hmm. you know, considering, but at the same time, a little frightening as well for us. Yeah, because I think, you know, mm -hmm. and I was like, wait, boy, this thing could be out of a sci-fi movie because diseases that dinosaurs may have had, frozen and trapped and now mm -hmm. being released, we may not know how to deal with that. Yes, yeah, somewhat, somewhat like that. I think there's, a, there's, a, there's actually, as I said, a lot of work being done by that because people are concerned. Um, there's actually been, there was a case in Russia, a few, 
I think it was 2016, 2015, somewhere around there, where actually a child died of anthrax and they believe that the child got it from actually frozen, frozen bacteria. Frozen that, bacteria that came out. All right. Yeah. And when we talk global warming and the effects of global warming, to the average person who here in this all the time mm -hmm. and don't know, um, what could be the effects? What could, is it, is it a harmful thing? Well, we hear that it's is, is harmful, but how? The place okay. is just going to get warmer. Am I going to just come to work in a vest and a short pants instead of wearing a shirt and a tie? <laughs> what to expect if this okay. continues? It comes naturally to us. Unstoppable energy. We use it to manifest a future. A future where energy takes new forms and is used in new ways for all of us. The new age of energy is here. The place okay. is just going to get warmer. Am I going to just come to work in a vest and a short pants instead of wearing a shirt and a tie? <laughs> What to expect if this okay. continues? Right. Well, there is a wide, wide range. Um, I think the ones people are most familiar with is increased temperatures overall. But that does not necessarily mean that you personally will feel hotter outside. What it does mean is that you are likely to see more extreme weather. So whereas you might have had one or two bad storms in a year, maybe you might have three or four. Uh, maybe the bad storms are twice or three times as bad as they used to be before. Um, what you also, what, and for us as small islands in the Caribbean, um, sea level rise is a major problem because as you pointed out, the ice age and the melting glaciers and the melting ice caps and so on, water never rise, is going to rise. rise. Even, even in Trinidad, because we have some reclaimed land, like Port of Spain, mm -hmm. like South Key, and West Morins, uh, from what I was told, is that is reclaimed land. So I guess, and if the sea level rises, it might take back that land. Yes, not 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 by it. If it does, it will. Um, and there is uh, there are a lot of model people have been doing a lot of work to try and figure out well, what will happen, because obviously we don't want to wait until we are foot underwater before we try to do something about it. So there's a lot of work being done to try and figure out what is going to happen. Mm. And one of the things that most people are pretty c confident is that there will be a sea level rise. And I think they're seeing that change now. And um, as for how much it will rise, anywhere from half a meter to more than a meter. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you think about how tall this table is. Yeah, I, I always use a meter by the meter rule that we used to get licks with in school. Yeah. It's long, long. long. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I can average a meter is about. Everybody. <laughs> So, is it so short? Yeah, yeah. there's a meter? Yeah. But, but, in my, but, went, oh, but I was shorter like this. So when I saw a meter <laughs> rule, it looked tall like this. Yeah, so I imagine. I mean, it might seem short, but then imagine, you know, you, as you say, sea lots, you walk on, you know, a meter, that water was to rise a meter. You could not drive on right away. Yeah, yeah, it would cover, it it would would cover, cover all it. Would, and you, you mentioned with the, with the change in climate, we would expect more mm -hmm. storms or... Is in case of the Caribbean, we have hurricanes. Do we expect to see more severe hurricanes or just greater in quantity or a combination of both? Well, actually, we're not really sure. That is one thing. They're not really sure if we will, in fact, see more and more intense hurricanes. That's one of the possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, I think what is, even if there were no, even if the storm stayed the same, actually, the impact for us as in the Caribbean would be almost just as bad because of the sea level change because now if you consider the sea level is higher when you have the storm even if it's a normal storm the storm surge which is the you know the water that comes onto the land in the mm -hmm. storm will be worse because now the water is higher right right, right? Um, so it starts out higher and then the storm comes and pushes it higher still and so where the water might have reached here before now it will reach well, the, the other day in, in Trinidad and Tobago too we saw some cases of hail <laughs> uh, so are we to expect more hail cases? Are we to expect snow? I need to get a winter jacket I if Santa know. Claus will not come now? I don't think you have to worry about the winter jacket. All right. And uh, All right. Santa was still coming at Toyota. <laughs> uh, but um, but well, whether there may be more like weird events like hail and so on, 
maybe. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure they will not, we wouldn't have to worry about snow. We're not worry about snow. Okay. I was excited. I never got to see <laughs> snow in, in real. So I was hoping maybe I could get a little <laughs> one Christmas where I can see yeah. some new other snow angel something. Yeah, so no. no. The nine, snow nine, is not all, all right. that's what is cracked up to me, no. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. What about our coral reefs? In Tobago, mm. do we have to worry about our coral reefs? Absolutely. Actually, coral reefs are particularly um, at risk from climate change um, for a number of reasons. Firstly, uh, they, under, they get put under stress with the increased temperatures. When the water is warmer, they are under more stress. So they are more susceptible to disease and, and, and poor growth and things like that. And then, not only that, we have a situation where you have more storms. If you have more storms and stronger storms, you have more physical damage because mm -hmm. the reefs usually act as the buffers, the barrier, the barrier against storm action mm -hmm. for the for the shore. So now you have this increased physical damage that they has to deal with. So more stress, and then on top of all of that, if you have more rain on the land, you might think, well, what does that have to do with the ocean, with the, the coral reefs? But all that fresh water is now coming into the ocean. Mm -hmm. right rivers do flow into the sea and then it changes how salty the water is right it makes it less salty and that will affect your corals as well and then on top of all of that if that was not enough um, we also have the fact that more carbon dioxide getting into the sea makes the sea more acidic mm -hmm. it's called ocean acidification and corals are basically lime living limestone mm -hmm. so their shells will dissolve if the sea gets, you know, if the acidity of the sea increases, this, the coral structures that we see as coral will actually dissolve. And, and how, all right, so this is in terms of, of underwater life as a, as a coral. What about the animals and the insects? Because we saw an invasion of locusts re recently as well. Is this related to climate change at all? Um, well, I... Possibly, maybe, maybe not. Um, the, I think the, the thing about the changes in the climate means you have all animals, insects, microorganisms move into places where they might not otherwise have been. And in that way, coming into contact with other organisms and animals and plants that they would not have otherwise done. Mm -hmm. So what you have now is if you have, a organ if you have an animal that is infected with some disease, maybe it has been doing, living happily with its virus that has been holding on to, fine, no problem. And then because of the, the changes in climate, we now have this, this, this animal, let's say, normally hangs out here, but now we could go here because it's warm enough. Right. And so he goes there and he bounces into this animal that has never seen it before and is, has no experience with this virus that this other one is carrying. Mm -hmm. And that is, the kind of, that, is what is, that is the kind of stuff that's going on We're behind the scenes. Opening Pandora's box. L yeah, yeah, yeah with literally. this. So on that note, we're going to take a short pause as we head into our mindfulness moment. Hi, and welcome to another mindful moment. Today, I want to talk to you about practicing self-compassion. We've talked about our thoughts and how they don't represent who we are. And so our thoughts can sometimes be unkind. So be mindful of the way that we speak to ourselves. You want to speak to yourself the way a good friend would. And really be gentle and kind to ourselves in the way that we speak to and about ourselves. I want to take us through a little visualization and just to encourage us to close our eyes and just practice that you were facing somebody that you really cared about, sending you lots of love. Just feel where you feel that in your body, usually in our heart or our chest. Good job. You're going to radiate that out to your community, to the whole of Trinidad and Tobago, to the Caribbean. You're sending that loving energy all the way out to the world. And now imagine that it's being reflected back right at you. Maybe helpful to put a hand over your chest as you breathe that loving energy in. And another technique that we often do is to imagine you're giving yourself a hug. We call this a somatic hold. Just really supporting yourself and nourishing yourself. You can do this anytime you need to. You breathe in that loving energy 
and let go any unkind thoughts. And remember, you can always come back to nurturing yourself and being here now. It's Rome, and we are here. We're chilling with the boys. We're liming with the kids. We're doing this all for the PED Cares Foundation. So we need you at home watching us to go donate, donate, donate. Head over to the pedcares.org and send that donation, whether it's via credit card, direct transfer, because we want to make sure that the kids of our pediatric emergency department get the best possible care that they can get because we need to take care of the next generation, the future lies with the kids. You all ready? On three, we go and say yeah. One, two, three. Yeah! Yay! The PD Cares Foundation. So we're back from our mindfulness moment and I hope that you feel a bit more relaxed after that. Okay, so we're here with Dr. Beckers and we're talking climate change, we're talking global warming, but then it has me thinking in terms of the cycle, because I, I know Taurus Riley sang it, and he said, the world is a cycle, mm. <laughs> right? And um, is Taurus Riley sing that? I don't make sure, but yeah, don't quote me on that, don't quote me on that, but I know the song, I know the song. And I heard that there was a cycle mm -hmm. where you go into an ice age, and then a warming phase, and then a cooling phase. Are we going through, what phase are we in now? Is another ice age to come? I'm a bit confused. Okay. Well, unfortunately, that is a little outside of my expertise, but I could just in general say, yes, the Earth does go in cycles, mm -hmm. warming cycle, cooling cycle. Um, and that happens because of where the Earth is in relation to the sun at any given time. Um, the thing is, those cycles take place over thousands of years. Right. All right? So, um, and in fact, it may actually be that we are in a cooling cycle right now, we just we can't see it because... You're having global warming right, and so right. that. All right, so, that, so those cycles are happening, um, but there's actually work people have been doing research and they do not believe that what we are seeing with the, the te our Earth warming has, is anything to do with that sort of natural cycle. They think this is, is in addition to. Oh, okay. Um, my producer just told me in my ear that is Richie Spice that sang this song. So thank you very much, producer. <laughs> Taurus Riley, I should have sang it, but um, Richie gone with it. Uh, so, so, so coming back to, to in terms of the, the, the effect and the impact, let me put that, that Trinidad and Tobago can have on the world. Mm. See, now we are just a dot. We are just a dot on the map, a speck. What? Could we really do in terms of global warming? Do we really have an impact on global warming across the world? Well, as, as in the words of the mighty David Rudder, little keys can open up mighty doors. Mm -hmm. And um, I do not think that any, any country would say that they are too small to have an impact in here. I think in, this is one of those issues that we all have to get behind. And in particular, because it's, 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 it's going to be the little dots that are going to be impacted the worst with this. Mm -hmm. um, the bigger countries, they are not going to feel the impact so much of sea level rise and so on. Um, Some place like the Bahamas, half of their land area could disappear if the land, if the sea level rise could be up to a meter. I mean, that's, so it's, it is the dots that are going to have to go out there and be fighting. And with the COP26 that, was, that we just had, mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the, those smaller, um, small island developing states, a lot of their prime ministers were there, ours was there, Barbados, other p places from in um, the Pacific Islands and so on, other dots around the world, they went and they made powerful statements because we cannot do anything what we can do, we can do for ourselves, yes, but the, imp the ones who can make the major change they're not us, so we have so we have to join together. Yeah, to kind of convince them that yes. everyone has one team. Yes, and to we have to together. join together. Yeah. We must. Yeah. Um, so as I said, I don't think we the approach of I personally feel as a um, personal responsibility. I try to do what I think is the best to keep my carbon footprint as small as possible. Mm -hmm. um, other people will see things differently. They will do their things differently. Um, Trinidad and Tobago has a lot of, um, actually we have a very high motorization level, which means that per person, we put out, we, we are up there with the heavy yeah, hitters no, and carbon I, I, dioxide. Per, per capita, I heard that we yeah. have a, a great carbon footprint per capita. Uh, yeah, so, but just like, we are just very few. 
So we still have some space to make our footprint smaller. And we also must join with other small island states out there to try and see if we can't help change the minds of the, the Because what, what I'm seeing too is that the world has already started warming. We have seen changes in a couple of degrees already in my generation. Is it too late? Can this be reversed? And if it can be reversed, mm. how can this be reversed? Um, I Honestly, I do not know if reverse is the correct term. I think it could be slowed and possibly halted. I mean, the whole point of all of this activity that went on um, in Scotland the last couple of weeks ago was to try and get everybody to agree that they want about the things that have to be done so that they could hold that temperature rise to two degrees. Mm. Um, the thing is, unfortunately, even if, they, uh, even if we are, as a globe we are successful, that will still, our glaciers and our ice uh, sheets will still be melting and we will still see sea level rise. So we will still have those things to deal with. Even if we are eight, long past 20, I think it's 2100, 2100, 2100. Right. That's when people are, want to get that temperature slow. Um, but even, even if that is possible, we will still have to deal with the impacts after. Mm. So. With, with, with that though, I would say it's all about everyone in this together. Um, mm -hmm. We're not one island alone. We are part of a globe. We are part of a universe. And we have to take care of the next generation to come. Mm -hmm. And I think we as people, we as human beings, sometimes can be a bit selfish in that we only think of the here and now and think of our lifetime. But then we never think of what is going to happen to our children and then our grandchildren and any generations to come of after course, that. Yes. So as humans, sometimes with that selfishness, we try to just consume everything within this time period that we are here. And then whoever to come after, they will catch the tail for themselves. And it took me back to, I'm not sure if you ever saw this, there was an infomercial cartoon that used to run on television when I was a child all the time with a, a guy called Engolok. <laughs> and he was on a, a planet called Pakaskas. And the planet was made out of um, streams of milk and, and the, 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 yes, the houses. You remember that? <laughs> yes. The houses were chocolate and, and everybody on the planet just started to eat. eat. <laughs> and Engelok was there trying to convince people, don't eat the planet, don't eat the planet. We had to leave back something. And then one of the, the, the people came and said, don't worry with Engelok, go on, eat, <laughs> eat. And Engelok had to pack up his entire family and leave. And it turns out that they consumed the planet. And I was a child when that mm -hmm. message came out. So that was always stuck with me of us using up the resources of our planet and not leaving back any for the other generations. And now as an adult, I hear about global warming and climate change and it took me right back to Engelok. <laughs> and we don't be the Engelok. Trinidad and Tobago, <laughs> the world at large, let's not leave Pakaskas in the state that they did back then where we have to take care of our own and take care of the generations to come. So thank you very much, Dr. Beckers, for joining mm -hmm. us today. This has been Homefront and I want to say thank you very much to Dwellings for putting together this marvelous set for us and to the PED Cares Foundation. Make sure you go out and support them. Donate, donate, donate to the kids and let's take care of our environment. Take care of each other and let's do this together. Not wait on the world leaders to do it alone because everyone has your own personal responsibility oh, yes. to make sure that we take care of our planet. My name is Rome. Thanks for joining us. who has a PhD, um, she is, let me, let me go again, or meet up, because I, I know mix up the PhD there. Yeah. I wanted, I, I, I see in here, she's a lecturer in environmental chemistry, but I don't know if the PhD is in chemistry.